Okay. Uh, up till now, we have seen the concept of human right. Human right are those minimum rights which are very essential to live a life of human being. And these the rights are necessary to be established against the state. Means certain rights which are basic, inalienable and inherent rights which are there with the person from its inception or from the birth. Those rights are considered as a human rights. These human rights also recognized as a natural rights, basic rights, fundamental rights, inherent rights, and uh, many other nomenclature has been added to to signify the human right as such. But essentially, human rights are those rights which are available to human beings. Being a human being to uh, survive and to sustain on this planet, on this earth, it is necessary to have certain rights to every human being. And after establishment of legal institution like a state or a crown or a sovereign authority, that sovereign authority, that state or that crown has guaranteed certain rights to human being. And those guaranteed rights are considered as a fundamental rights, human rights. And therefore, this human right, because unless and until we respect the human right, there cannot be a security. Without security, there cannot be a peace. Without peace, there cannot be a development. Without development, there cannot be a dignity of the human being. And to protect the dignity of human being is the very right of each and every individual, each and every person. Okay. Then uh, the evolution of human rights we are speaking for. The evolution can be studied in three parts, ancient, renaissance and modern period. In ancient period, we can uh, consider the period of before Christ. Before Christ, the human right was already there in the society, in different systems, in different legal systems of the world. For example, in Europe, there was a concept of rights of man. The concept of rights of man signifies that the in Europe, gradually the rights of man has been uh, recognized. But this concept was uh, fall very short because the in rights of man, only the rights of particular sections of the society, particular class of the society has been recognized. Rest of the society, like a Negro people or women, the person belonging to lower strata of the society, Samajatla Kalcha Staratla Lokana, Mahilana, Ani, just slaves with a Negro people. Then the man Samajla Zatnota, then the animal, he was slave, like a property, they were considered as a property and they were subject to sale and purchase. And therefore, no rights was available to such person, such man. And therefore, the person is a generic term, but the man is a kind of political term. And therefore, in Europe, the concept of rights of man uh, was there for centuries. But later on, it was changed. That we'll see later on. Then in Vedic periods in India, in eastern part of Asia, in Vedic period, the human rights has been recognized of all individuals. For example, the king or the queen who has a sovereign authority over a particular territory, he has guaranteed certain rights to his subjects. Prajala, Raja ne kahi adhikar dele le hote. Jasa, Prajala, aapla jivan saati, right to marriage, right to set up family, right to trade business, right to speech and expression, right to speak against the operation. Manjajar ekadi, techar kutlai prakar chi zulum zabartas ti zaliya selta, techa virudda bolne cha adhikar. Nagarikanahota means human right was there in Ramayana Mahabharata. We can see that the rights of subjects, the rights of citizens, and the rights of the people have been recognized in these uh, epics of Ramayana and Mahabharata. Then the all religions have recognized the humanist perspective. Humanist perspective means all the religions have recognized that. The religion is there to recognize the religious values and moral values of each and every individual. Okay. 
and therefore every religion may it be hindu muslim sikh isai all these religions have recognized the humanist perspective and of course they have recognized the human rights of all the people then moving towards the natural law or roman law which has been developed uh, particularly in roman system these natural rights have been recognized by the romans in their uh, empire the concept of natural rights has been discussed along with the natural law the natural law means uh, the law derived from the god the god made law or the law made by the nature itself and therefore these natural rights received a very significant value during the romans for example the plato aristotle are the famous jurist before christ era the plato has said that the universal standard of ethical conduct shall be maintained shall be achieved universal standard of ethical conduct that ethical conduct is considered as a norms or a protocols and that protocols that norms should be of universal standard means there cannot be a bifurcation there cannot be a discrimination on the basis of race religion caste or sex or place of birth these universal standards should secure the rights of all man and woman apart from their uh, any kind of Uh, distinction in between them then the ulpian another roman jurist who has propounded the theory of law of nature he has said it is not the natural law but it is the law of nature in this law of nature all men are equal all men belonging to every religion race caste anything all men are by birth they are equal and being a equal being they are regulated by the same law they are regulated by the same law that law is called as a law of nature before law of nature every person is equal every man is equal and therefore all men are born free means at the first time it is uh, came into the mind of romans that all men are born free there cannot be a discrimination on the basis of their birth on the basis of their race religion or caste by birth they are free free from the clutches free from the control of another okay then another well known jurist cicero has said that the universal human rights laws are there universal means they are applicable to each and every corner of the world and these universal human rights laws can be found in the customary and civil laws in customary laws every human being has its own aspirations belief faith and accordingly he do believe he do behave in the society samajamadhe pratyek samajache jagamadhe pratyek samajache swatache ashe kai belief astat kai upasna marga astat ki jyachavar tancha purna vishwas asto ani he sagle ह्युमन राईट्स ला डिवोट केलेले असतात असं या सिझरन या ठिकाणी म्हटलं गेलेलं आहे ऑफकोर्स दिस थिअरी दिस पिरियड इज अ व्हेरी लॉंग पिरियड बट वी कॅन नॉट स्पेअर मच टाइम ऑन दिस एन्शियंट पिरियड देन वील हॅव अ क्विक रिव्ह्यू ऑफ रेनिसान्स पिरियड इन रेनिसान्स पिरियड पर्टिक्युलरली आफ्टर इन ट्वेंथ ट्वेल्थ सेंचुरी टू एटीन सेंचुरी द पिरियड इज कन्सिडर्ड एज अ रेनिसान्स पिरियड in this period we have seen uh, while studying the jurisprudence uh, natural law theory the saint thomas aquinas has conceived the concept of divine law he said that natural law is nothing but the divine law he who has a care of all human beings that is the god the god has a care of all human beings and that god himself has given certain laws which can be received which can be pursued by his uh, special child like a jesus he is a son of god and therefore these uh, god made law can be derived from the son from the bishops or from those who are having uh, ecclesiastical jurisdiction ecclesiastical jurisdiction means the person who has received 
द सेल्फ रिअलायझेशन दॅट इज आत्मसाक्षात्कार ज्याला झालेला आहे अशा व्यक्तींकडून आलेले जे काही ज्ञान आहे त्याला नॅचरल लॉ किंवा डिवाईन लॉ म्हणावं असं त्या ठिकाणी सेंट थॉमस अक्विनस यांनी म्हटलेलं आहे कारण आत्मसाक्षात्कार झाल्यानंतर सेल्फ रिअलायझेशन झाल्यानंतर तो व्यक्ती संपूर्ण जगाचा होतो संपूर्ण जगावर त्याचं प्रेम बसत त्याच्यासाठी कोणीही परका किंवा आपला असा भेदभाव उरत नाही असं त्या एकले सीएसटिकल ज्युरिस्टिक्शन मध्ये म्हटलेलं आहे फर्दर सेंट थॉमस अक्विनस हॅज सेड दी लॉज आर बेस्ड ऑन द ह्युमन रिझनिंग द ह्युमन रिझनिंग मीन्स to decide what is good and what is bad what is right and what is wrong the person can decide himself on the basis of his human reasoning the different rights like freedom of speech equality before law right to vote right to trade right to property these are the certain rights which has to be guaranteed to each and every individual that is the opinion of saint thomas aquinas in romans also the concept of just civil civil rights civilization has been developed the person who resides the person who belongs to civil society has certain civil rights okay then we have seen in the year 1215 1215 madhe magna carta issue kelela ahe king john ii of england यांनी पंधरा जून एक बाराशे पंधरा रोजी काय केलं मॅग्ना कार्टा दॅट इज अ सिटीझन्स चार्टर ऑर दी राईट ऑफ द सिटीझन नावाचा एक डॉक्युमेंट रिलीज केलेला आहे व्हेअर इन ही सेड दॅट ऑल मेन आर फ्री दॅट दे विल बी प्रोटेक्टेड अगेन्स्ट द आर्बिटररी ऍक्ट बाय द किंग ऑर क्राऊन बिकॉज वी नो इन इंग्लंड देर इज अ मॅक्झिम दॅट द किंग कॅन डू नो रॉंग मीन्स the king is free to do anything whatever he wants and ultimately the king to operates through his agents kingsmen statesmen servants and therefore there was no concept of vicarious liability of the state the state was immune the crown was immune because of doctrine of sovereign immunity but in 1215 by issuing the magna carta the king john ii has accepted that the king shall not behave in arbitrary manner and further the henry iii in 1216 has said that the magna carta shall be confirmed by the parliament means he has accepted the parliamentary superiority over the crown over the crown means the crown is subject to the laws made by the parliament the crown is not immune from the law of tort or from the wrongful acts done by his servant and therefore the this is a very important development in the history of common law countries further under this magna carta the concept of jury trial has been introduced the jury trial wherein the representatives from uh, different sectors come together as a judge they sits as a jury member and they decides whether the arrest and imprisonment is arbitrary or not means whether the king or his servants have behaved in a wrongful manner in a arbitrary manner if they have done any misfeasance or malfeasance then the king and his servants will be held vicariously liable for the wrongful acts and the victims shall get compensation okay this is the development of law of tort then in uh, 1689 1691 madhe bill of rights pass karnat aale america uh, england cha parliament madhe tanni matle the act for declaring the rights and liberties this act that is a bill of rights is for declaring the rights and liberties we are here to see the evolution of human rights this evolution has tremendously changed in 1689 because of bill of rights this bill of rights has given a documentary authority for the rule of law in england this bill of right has given a documentary authority means now it is a written law earlier the rule of law was not written as such it was oral it was practiced by conventions by years together but after making a magna carta after enacting a bill of rights 
now it is settled that the rule of law in england that is the common law is now a documented one another jurist a famous jurist hugo grotius has said that human beings are endowed with certain eternal and inalienable rights human beings are endowed with means every human being possesses endowed with means possesses he has been vested with certain eternal and inalienable rights eternal means those rights which cannot be deprived of which cannot be taken away in any corner of the world jagacha kutle kopre madhe jar konni manus asel to tyache kahi adhikar kadun getle jau shakat nahi te rights kashe ahet eternal ahet from its birth from inception jeva pasun manav samaj tayar zalela ahet teva pasun te rights ahet tyas barobar inalienable rights it cannot be alienated it cannot be deprived of and therefore the yoga grocious also recommended the grocious who is one of the positivist has strongly recommended that there shall be a certain eternal and inalienable rights of every human being then a uh, paradigm shift has been made in the human right by french declaration of the rights of man and the citizens france made javi राजा लुई पाचवा याचा शिरच्छेद करण्यात आला आणि मोठ्या प्रमाणात तिथे क्रांती घडून आली फ्रेंच राज्यक्रांती ज्याला आपण म्हणतो फ्रेंच रिव्हॉल्युशन ज्याला आपण म्हणतो अँड इन आफ्टर दॅट फ्रेंच रिव्हॉल्युशन अ डिक्लरेशन हॅज बीन इश्यूड दॅट द फ्रेंच डिक्लरेशन ऑफ द राईट्स ऑफ मॅन अँड द सिटीझन राईट्स ऑफ मॅन दिस कन्सेप्ट हॅज बीन लॅटर बीन कन्सिडर्ड ॲज अ ह्युमन राईट्स ओके विल सी दॅट where in in that french declaration it is clearly mentioned that men are born and remain free every man are born every person is born free free means without the restriction on his right every man is born free and he shall remain free he shall remain free and equal in rights every person are equal in rights means equality before law and equal protection of law okay these equal rights freedom has been strongly recognized by the french declaration and this has given to the whole world a new perspective to look towards the human rights and ya french declaration mule kay zala jagamade pahilanda human right kade seriously bagnyachi garaj ahe asa tya tikani sangnat ala okay these natural and inalienable rights such as liberty right to property security resistance to operation all these rights have been developed because of this french revolution and in france the egalitarian society that is the society which is based on equality and therefore equality is a concept which has been uh, derived from french revolution and it has been incorporated in indian constitution also what is in by justice justice is nothing but the equality uh, indian constitution madhe dekhil ti ghetle gelele ahe particularly under article 14 15 16 speaks about the equality okay then uh, after renaissance period it comes a modern period particularly the period after 18th century till now is considered as a modern period in this modern period while Tra- making translation of french declaration by thomas pen thomas pen is a well known jurist in england he has uh, written many books he has uh, created a huge impact on the social thinkers of the world for example mahatma gandhi mahatma phule has been uh, highly influenced by the thoughts of thomas pen and the thomas pen has made a english translation of a german uh, sorry french declaration of the rights of man and the citizens and the, at the first time this thomas pen while making a translation of rights of man he considered it as a human right instead of writing as a right of man rights of man it shall be branded as a human right because rights of man is limited to the man belonging to particular class the man belonging to particular strata of the society but the concept of human right is a broad one is a comprehensive it includes all the human beings the rights of all the human beings shall be included in the concept of human right and this human right is 
nothing but a synonym of natural rights or a rights of man natural rights fundamental rights basic rights or rights of man human rights all these are considered as a very synonymous <coughs> to each other okay then while moving towards the theories of human rights there is nothing like a particular theories of human right but the theories means a thought process where the answer is given what exactly the human right is what are the human rights why these human rights has been developed what is the source of these human rights what is the object of these human rights that has been discussed in these theories and how these human rights has been developed how this human right have come up how these human rights are very important or significant to live a life of human being with a dignity all this process thinking process or thought process is considered as a theories of human rights these theories are natural rights positivism marxist liberal feminism socialism these are certain theories of human rights we have seen in jurisprudence that there are theories of rights what is a right right is nothing but an interest according to salomon right is nothing but an interest which is recognized and protected by law or by administration of justice is considered as a right means a right is an interest both recognized and protected when an interest gets recognized by the legal system and simultaneously it shall get protected then that interest become the rights then what is interest to give the answer of this question the theories have been developed interest theory and will theory interest theory that is the interest which is recognized and protected by law is a right whereas according to some jurist it is the human will the person expresses his will over a particular person or a particular object and therefore the right is created ekhatya goshti vishay jale apan ichha darshavto kya dakhavto ki to vyakti ti vastu maji ahe ani maza mhanun tyachar kai adhikar ahe tya adhikarala right asa matle gelela ahe asa will theory madhe sangitle it is a expression of human will okay therefore the interest theory and will theory has been developed in natural rights uh, that is the natural law theory it says that there are certain natural rights the person is a natural animal and therefore he do possess certain natural rights and therefore the natural rights are there with the person from his birth since inception itself then positivism we know that due to falling short of natural law theory world war first second jhalanantar नॅचरल लॉ हा कमी पडतोय असं वाटायला लागलं आणि त्यावेळी असं वाटायला लागलं की देअर शाल बी अ सर्टन फिक्स लॉ फिक्स प्रिन्सिपल्स ऑफ लॉ द लॉ विच हॅज बीन मेड बाय अ मॅन फॉर अनादर मॅन पर्टिक्युलर स्पीकिंग बाय अ पॉलिटिकल सुपेरियर अथॉरिटी फॉर द पॉलिटिकल इन्फिरियर सब्जेक्ट यांनी तयार केले जे माणसाने माणसाने तयार केले लॉ म्हणजे पॉझिटिव्ह लॉ पॉझिटिव्ह म्हणजे पॉझिटिव्ह एफर्ट शाल बी टेकन it is a command of sovereign back by the sanction as it is said by the austin that positive law means a law as it is it is the branch of law which studies the law as it is the law imperfect law properly so called and law improperly so called these are the distinction made by bentham later on austin has said positivism and therefore the rights are only those rights which are expressly recognized as well as guaranteed and protected by a law by legal system by judiciary that rights are considered as a rights there is nothing like a natural rights or a human right as such according to positivist then in marxist theory the karl marx has developed his theory on the basis of presumption that there are two sections of the society the one class which have and another class which don't have have means the person belonging to capitalist the person who are having uh, adequate means of life adequate means of production samajamadhe don ghatak ahe ahere ani nahire jancha kade ahe manje paishanchi uplabdhata ahe ani asa dusra ghat ki jo garib ahe lachar ahe jacha kade kahi nahi hai asa dusra ghat ani manun samajamadhe 
जे दोन गट तयार झाले हे पर्टिक्युलरली ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इकॉनॉमिक्स आर्थिक विषमता जी आहे त्यावर काल मार्क्सने मोठा फोकस केलेला आहे जगामध्ये हे दोनच गट आणि मग मार्क्स हॅज गिवन अ डेव्हलपमेंट टू द सोशलिझम अँड कम्युनिझम आणि मग भारतामध्ये कॅपिटलिस्ट आणि सोशलिस्ट असं याचं कॉम्बिनेशन असं सोशलिझम स्वीकारण्यात आलं समाजवाद स्वीकारण्यात आला इंडिया इज नायदर अ कॅपिटलिस्ट नायदर सोशलिस्ट द ब्युटिफुल डिस्कशन हॅज बीन मेड बाय डॉक्टर बी आर आंबेडकर इन दी कॉन्स्टंट असेंबली वाईल मेकिंग प्रोव्हिजन्स रिलेटिंग टू डायरेक्टिव्ह प्रिन्सिपल्स ऑफ स्टेट पॉलिसी अँड वाईल इन्सर्टिंग द वर्ड सोशलिस्ट इन इंडियन प्रियम्बल ओके देन the marxists uh, do focus on the people belonging to the lower strata of the society the people uh, like a laborer employees uh, shet mazur bonded labor he je kai samajatle ghatak ahe tyacha vishay ha marxism jo ahe marxvad mothya pramanavar charcha kartana disun yeto okay then the liberal theory of human rights liberal theory of human rights means every person shall have a right and while uh, punishing the per, uh, person the strict interpretation shall be made whenever there is a question of uh, giving a broad interpretation to human right it is considered as a liberal human rights means the welfare law the remedial law shall be liberally interpreted shall receive a liberal interpretation whereas the laws which restricts the human rights shall be interpreted in a very restrictive manner very limited manner because every law has a object to give certain remedy certain welfare to the people no law shall be made in uh, with the object of retribution every law has a aim and object of a reformation and improvement okay then the feminism the feminism is a uh, feminist movement the movement to uh, make improvement in the life of women the standard of women the living standard of women the women shall receive a equal respect the equal pay for equal work she shall be treated as a equal partner of man she is a half of the world जगामध्ये जितके पुरुष आहेत तितक्या स्त्रिया आहेत आणि म्हणून स्त्रियांना देखील समान दर्जा समान वेतन मिळालं पाहिजे समान काम समान वेतन मिळालं पाहिजे याच्यासाठी मागणी करणार ही फेमिनिस्ट मुवमेंट जगामध्ये सुरू झालेली पाहायला मिळते द युनायटेड नेशन हॅज ऑल्सो मेड अ सेपरेट कमिशन ऑन द स्टेटस ऑफ वुमेन मेनी कन्व्हेन्शन हॅज बीन मेड बाय दिस कमिशन ऑफ ऑन स्टेटस ऑफ वुमेन देन द सोशलिझम सोशलिझम इज अ काइंड ऑफ मुवमेंट इज अ काइंड ऑफ थिअरी which focuses on the study of the conditions of the people belonging to the lower strata the people uh, who have been differently abled the people belonging to such community such class which, who has been uh, negligently uh, deprived of his right to life and other rights and freedoms like dalit uh, mahila kiwa shet mazur असे जे लोक आहेत किंवा मजूर मजुरी करणारे जे लोक आहेत की ज्यांच्याकडे समाजाचं कधीही जास्त लक्ष गेलं नाही किंवा ज्याला समाजामध्ये फारशी किंमत नसते अशा लोकांचं बाजू उचलून धरण्याचं काम सोशलिझम या थिअरीने केलेलं पाहायला मिळतं देर इज नथिंग लाईक अ पर्टिक्युलर थिअरी ऑफ ह्युमन राईट्स बट द पर्सन हू स्टडीज द पर्टिक्युलर सेक्शन ऑफ द सोसायटी इज कन्सिडर्ड अ थिअरी ऑफ दॅट ह्युमन राईट ओके काहींना लहान मुलांच्या बाबतीतली काळजी जास्त असते त्याच्यामुळे दॅट इज अनादर पार्ट ऑफ ह्युमन राईट काही माणसांना महिलांच्या बाबतीत सहानुभूती असते ते त्यांच्या बाबतीत डेव्हलपमेंट करतात दॅट इज अनादर काइंड ऑफ ह्युमन राईट काहींना जे फिजिकली किंवा मेंटली डिसेबल्ड चाइल्ड आहेत त्यांच्यासाठी काम करण्याची इच्छा होते दॅट इज अनादर काइंड ऑफ ह्युमन राईट ह्युमन राईट इज अ व्हेरी जेनेरिक टर्म अँड द पर्सन हू डेडिकेट्स हिज लाईफ अँड वर्क टुवर्ड्स सेक्युअरिंग the particular standard or upliftment of that particular strata of the society is considered as that particular theory of human right okay tya tya kshetra madhe mansacha anek bhagan madhe aslele je kai human rights cha kaam karnare sanstha ahet tanna 
थेरी ऑफ ह्युमन राईट असं म्हटलं जातं ओके देन दिस थेरी इज नॅचरल राईट्स सोशल राईट्स लिगल राईट्स हिस्टॉरिकल राईट्स अँड इकॉनॉमिक राईट्स दीज आर डिफरंट काइंड ऑफ राईट्स विच आर अवेलेबल टू एव्हरी ह्युमन बिंग देन दार्ट इज इंटरनॅशनल ह्युमन राईट्स लॉ the our subject is international human rights law international human right law means what it is a body of international law to promote and protect human rights at the international regional and national level international human right law means what it is a body of law it is a body of international law earlier it was known as a law of nations but now it is considered as a international law all those international agencies all those international instruments who works for the sake of promotion and protection of human rights are considered as a international human rights laws the law which protects the human rights at international level that law is considered as a international human right law and this international human right law has developed many conventions and international instruments like international slavery convention international labor organization league of nations world war first world war second and united nation organization and its different organs of united nations hana ya international human right movement mule kay zalela ahe international human right law mule ki jagamade ja international uh, human right hi ji kay concept ahe hi motha pramanavat charcha karnat ali ani tyache je kay mahatvache tappe ahet ते आपण ह्या वेगळ्या सेक्टरमध्ये बघू शकतो की जगामध्ये अनेक वेगळ्या प्रकारचे कन्व्हेन्शन्स कॉव्हिनंट्स वेगळ्या देशांमध्ये अग्रीमेंट झालेले आपल्याला पाहायला मिळतात आणि त्याचे जे महत्वाचे टप्पे आहेत ते म्हणजे लीग ऑफ नेशन्स वर्ल्ड वॉर फर्स्ट सेकंड आणि युनायटेड नेशन ह्या तीन गोष्टींमुळे जग मोठ्या प्रमाणात बदललेलं पाहायला मिळतं लीग ऑफ नेशन्स त्याच्या आधी झालेल्या वर्ल्ड वॉर फर्स्ट त्याच्यानंतर आलेलं वर्ल्ड वॉर सेकंड आणि वर्ल्ड वॉर सेकंड नंतर आलेला युनायटेड नेशन आणि या सगळ्यांचा परिणाम एकत्रितपणे भारताच्या संविधानावर किंवा भारतीयांवर झालेला पाहायला मिळतो इंडियन्स हॅव बीन हायली इम्पॅक्टेड बिकॉज ऑफ द ब्रिटिश रूल ओव्हर इंडिया अँड टुवर्ड सेक्युअरिंग द ह्युमन राईट्स द गव्हर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ऍक्ट नाईन्टीन थर्टी फाईव्ह इज अ मेजर माईलस्टोन अँड देअर आफ्टर इन द इयर नाईन्टीन वी हॅव अडॉप्टेड अँड एनॅक्टेड द कॉन्स्टिट्युशन ऑफ इंडिया in this constitution the part 3rd and part 4 that is the fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy provides and guarantees certain human rights to each and every individual being yes now the unit number 2 will take a quick recap uh, quick review of how the U- uh, united nation has been established in uh, the world what is the uh stages of development of uh, united nation 